Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today I'm going to react to um, Nonstop Sports, Kobe's most badass moments, man. Man, you already know Kobe got some, like, legendary, you know, crazy moments, like if it's trash talking or, or even, you know, fucking game winners and shit. But, you know, let's get to full reaction, man. Like, Kobe, Kobe even got Ryan some crazy ass stories, mind game shots. stories. It's like, top tier players and man. pissed off a lot of fans. Off the court, he was unfiltered. It was a fire moment. And one of the when he was counting the rings. Here are Kobe Bryant's most badass moments. So oh, yeah. Yeah, this little pair of finger. The craziest and most badass example of Kobe's mama mentality. And it involves Rob Palenka. Before Palenka became a general manager for the Lakers, he was Kobe's agent. Palenka represented yeah. many famous players, but Kobe was more than a client. That's Rob how he got the GM job. The closest of friends. One day, agent. they decided to rent a boat because Kobe had an insane idea. He wanted to swim with great white sharks. Kobe believed that swimming with sharks would eliminate every fear he could ever face on the basketball. Basketball court. He also studied how the Great Whites attack seals in order to improve his game against Allen Iverson. That's how what? crazy and obsessed he was with the game of basketball and pushed himself to get better. Of course, this wasn't the only weird thing that Kobe did to improve his skills. He also learned tap dancing to strengthen his ankles. He played outside when the sun was brightest to train his eyes and watched how cheetahs use their tail for balance just so he could improve his fadeaway jumper. For two years straight, oh Kobe listened God. to the song that the Celtics fans sang when he lost the championship against Boston. He listened to the song every day to bring him back to the moment of the loss, which would only motivate him to work harder. Wow. So, what is the meaning of the Mamba mentality? It is to be willing to swim with the sharks in order to get better at something. Quarter of an inch. Bro, I swear, Kobe was fucking... Bro, I swear, he's fucking obsessed, bro. It's like, it's like the drive Kobe had... It's like, bro, the drive Kobe had was crazy. It's like, bro, you heard what he just said? Swimming with sharks and shit, studying... Stu studying fucking cheetahs, how they balance and shit. It's like, bro, Kobe was, bro, Kobe, bro. That, that Kobe was Crazy different. Crazy story comes from Gerald different. Henderson's first game against the Lakers. Just more, more precisely, in the moments before the game, Henderson was a rookie in Charlotte, and he arrived at the pregame shoot-around early to prepare for Kobe. Of course, when he arrived, Bryant was already in the arena putting up shot after yeah. shot. Puffy, Henderson Puffy decided was. to skip his shooting drills and watch man, the RP great master Mamba, work. Man. But to his surprise, Mamba was missing a lot more shots than he was was making. Finally, Kobe stopped shooting and started to talk to a bunch of workers. After a while, one of them came back with a ladder. Gerald then asked Kobe, what's going on? Something's wrong with the rim. It's too low. I was missing shots that I don't miss. I'm pretty sure it's low by a quarter of an inch. Henderson thought that it was nonsense that he could tell a quarter of an inch on a 10-foot rim and that Kobe was just missing shots. But after the game, Henderson saw one of the arena workers who was measuring the basket. Hey, what was wrong with the basket earlier? Gerald asked. Oh, it was a little bit too low, the worker replied. By how much? Henderson asked, even though he already knew the answer. It was by a quarter of an inch. Kobe was Ooh, just that good, gosh. that well prepared, and so sure of himself that he could see a 0.2% difference in the basket. Bro, that's crazy. That ball that's Kobe crazy, though, bro. I swear to wait, Kobe studied it. Get like, bro, he even studied the rim, bro. Like, bro, that's crazy. One of the toughest NBA players ever. And he wouldn't get intimidated yeah. by anyone. It's fucking both people's funny as fuck, Brian got man. into a fist fight with Shaq. Even though O'Neal outweighed him by over 100 pounds. Kobe had memorable on-court altercations with Reggie Miller, Ron Artest, and Dwight Howard. And the whole league knew that they shouldn't mess with the Black Mamba. However, Matt Barnes wanted to test the theory himself. So in 2009, playing against the Lakers, Barnes was taking the ball out of bounds. Now both Kobe work. right in front of him. And Matt faked the pass millimeters in front of Kobe's face, who didn't even flinch. This moment became the epitome of Bryant's badass attitude and showed how cool he was under pressure. Next season, Kobe invited Barnes to play for the Lakers, saying that if he's crazy enough to F with him, he should be crazy enough to play with him. One more than Shaq. During the 2010 final series against Boston, Kobe was severely injured, but he kept playing despite a gruesome bone spur in his ankle. The pain was so bad that he had to receive injections just so he could play. And to make things worse, Kobe played the entire postseason with a broken finger. Against all odds, and going against four future Hall of Famers, Kobe won the series in seven games and delivered another championship to LA. Mm -hmm. Then to top things off, he followed it up with one of the most iconic press conference moments in NBA history. When a reporter asked Kobe what did the fifth title mean for him personally, Kobe cracked open a wide smile and said, just got one more than Shaq. You can take that to the bank. Two years earlier, mm -hmm. after the Lakers 
loss in the 2008 finals. Shaq appeared in a club and rapped about Kobe's loss. O'Neal bragged that Bryant couldn't win without him with a legendary diss, Man. asking Kobe how his ass tastes. Kobe got five. Two championships later, Kobe finally had more titles and the mm -hmm. bragging rights over Shaq. Saltier than the Dead Sea, Mamba wasted no time rubbing it in Shaq's face, and O'Neal tore up his house when he heard what Kobe said after the game. Torn Achilles, April 12th, yeah, 2013, rough, is the infamous date that brought men to the athletic Kobe Bryant. In the month prior yeah. to that devastating day, a 34-year-old Kobe was averaging over 40 minutes per game, putting the Lakers on his back to make the playoffs. In the fourth quarter of a close game against Golden man, State, ACL, Bryant man. fell down on a drive against Harrison Barnes. Kobe heard a pop and felt a sharp pain in his Achilles, and he knew it immediately. He knew that his season was over and that he'll need to have a long recovery. But again, the job was not done. Kobe stepped on the, the line. Free throws. You could see that his eyes were tearing up, but he still needed to make two free throws. Get the free of course, throws. Kobe being Kobe, he nailed them both and then walked off the court on his own with a torn Achilles tendon. In a post-game interview, is crazy, crying man. and full of angry rage, Bryant swore that he'll come back. Just eight months later, he was back on the court, setting an NBA record for the quickest return after a torn Achilles. Damn. That's why Kobe was one of the toughest to efforts in the history of all sports. Pulling an all-nighter for Will Chamberlain. Pulling an all-nighter meant adding another point to the tally of 20,000. Jordan used to pull all-nighters at the casino, while Iverson and countless others were out in the club. But Kobe, he was known for pulling... Nigga, nigga showed a picture of James Harden. Nigga, don't... Nigga, James Harden out here pulling all-nighters, man, but he ain't keeping his body in shape, nigga. That nigga is a fucking Humpty Dumpty now, bro. Look, look at this nigga James Harden at the club, bro. Pulling all nighters in the gym. There are a million stories. Disrespect to the game, man. Dating from his high school days when he used to sneak to the gym at night and work on his game. But our favorite story came before the 2012 Olympics from the Team USA trainer. At four in the morning, Kobe woke up the trainer to help him with some conditioning drill. When he arrived at the facility, Kobe was already drenched in sweat. Then they worked out for two hours until seven, and the trainer left to catch a few. Few hours of sleep. A groggy and underslept trainer returned for the team practice at 11. Kobe was still shooting. This badass maniac never left the gym because he wanted to make 800 shots. That means that he spent eight hours in the gym, plus the two hours of practice oh. with LeBron and the rest of the Team USA. A dedication kind of for success, man. They seem crazy to most people, but it was just another all nighter for Kobe, doing what he loved the most. 40 mile bike ride. Michael Jordan and God Kobe Bryant had the same personal trainer, and it was Tim Grover. Kobe told Grover that he wanted to include cycling in his summer conditioning program to relieve the stress on his knees. Before mm. the 2008 Olympics, during the Team USA summer camp, Kobe, his security guard, and Grover rented three bikes and went for a ride in the middle of the night. They rode 40 miles into the desert and came back to the Las Vegas Hotel at 2 in the morning. Of course, at 7 a.m., Kobe was already shooting in the gym. If you didn't know, Kobe was always sleeping three to four hours each night, and he swore that he always had enough energy. LeBron sleeps up to 10 hours a day to recover, but I guess that Kobe was just built different. 55 on MJ. In late 2002, yeah, he did drop 55 on MJ, was playing bro. for the Wizards in the last season of his career. And even though his sneakers were still named Air Jordan, Damn. MJ was no Man, longer Jordan as athletic and right couldn't there. levitate like before. At that point, Bryant already had three championships. He was the best shooting guard in the NBA, and everybody was comparing him to Michael. When the Wizards hosted the Lakers, the entire world expected to see Bryant dominating the agent Jordan. However, the master had surprisingly outdone the student, and the Wizards won the game at the buzzer. Mm -hmm. Jordan then trash-talked Bryant, teasing him about the loss, and saying that Kobe could wear his shoes, but that he will never fill them. Mm -hmm. Those words drove Kobe insane. To the next game. He always wanted to be like Mike. Mm -hmm. He didn't speak to his teammates for weeks, until the March game against the Wizards at the Staples Center. Mm -hmm. It was the last time Jordan and Kobe ever played against each other, and Mamba made sure that Michael would remember it Drop forever. 55 on that nigga head. And absolutely annihilated the Wizards with 55 points in a spectacular shooting performance. This proved that it's foolish to ever talk trash to Kobe, even if your name is Michael Jordan. In 2006, a very similar thing happened with Andre Iguodala, who held Kobe to just 17 points in a victory of his Sixers over the Lakers. The media made a big deal out of Iguodala's defense, and Kobe remembered Man, it's crazy, bro. Iggy what, bro, it's... Bro, Iggy on the fucking 76ers was nice, bro. Like, Iggy was nice, man, on the 76ers. Shit crazy. 
But now, went to the Warriors, and he became Franz MVP, man. And now he's trying to go for another championship against the Celtics. Kobe came to the Sixers locker room before the game and told Iguodala that he was going to drop 50 on it. He said what he was going to do and destroyed Iggy. Bryant finished with 48 points, but only because it was a blowout, and he didn't play in the last quarter. Is the job finished? Kobe played spectacularly. Oh, yeah. This one approached uh, press conference. Magic. He finished with 29 points and 8 assists, mm -hmm. pushing the Lakers to a 2 nothing lead. In the post-game interview, the reporter asked Bryant why he was frowning and why he wasn't happy after a big win. With a blank stare, Kobe replied, what's there to be happy about? Job's not finished. Is the job finished? I don't think so. It was a classic Mamba quote. And another example yeah, of this pure dark energy and ultimate focus to win. Dropping 60 and mentoring. In November of 2015, Kobe wrote Dear Basketball and announced that he was retiring. Bro, that was crazy, bro. Dear Basketball was nice, man. Like, that was nice. Man, it's crazy, man. Kobe won a fucking Oscar for that, man. <sighs> man, Kobe was taking it way too soon, man. Way In November soon. of 2015, when Kobe wrote Dear Basketball and announced that he was retiring, he suddenly saw a change in Kobe. For the first time yeah, in his career, like he still had more to do off the court, man. He was not trying to get better at like, basketball. basketball was just was no like longer the first the step, man. killer he was for 19 years. His personality opened to a degree we've never seen before. Number 24 was smiling and laughing at in every interview, told stories, and showed us his humbleness, his intellect, and sense of humor. His body was killing him, and his stats were awful, but we didn't care. We liked the new Kobe. However, in the last game of his career, Bro. this superhero somehow Kobe found put on a show. 60 points against he the put Jets, on a which show. was arguably the most badass finish to any sports career ever. After he retired, Damn. Kobe became one of the favorite guests on talk shows. He launched a successful career in writing and publishing, and your basketball won an Oscar, but even though he didn't play anymore, Kobe was still loyal to the orange ball he fell in love with as a six-year-old. In 2017, after Isaiah Thomas lost his sister during the NBA playoffs, Kobe was on the phone with him for several hours after each game, giving mm. basketball advice. When the Cavs won a championship, Kobe was the first person Kyrie Irving called. Bryant mentored and offered his immense basketball knowledge to a lot of NBA players. He was one of the best promoters of women's basketball, and his books have inspired millions of kids worldwide. Even after basketball, Kobe poured the mama mentality into everything he was doing man. kept being a badass man man Kobe was definitely taken away way too soon man like bro, he was just getting started man like like, bro, he was just getting started with, with fucking, like, off-the-court shit, man. Like, bro, he did their basketball. That shit won a fucking Oscar, bro. It's like, god damn, man. Man, man, Kobe was already great on the court. And it's like, bro, 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 the fucking um, off-the-court shit would have been crazy, bro. Because, like, bro, he would have did so much shit. But, man, man, he definitely took away from us way too soon. But, but Kobe's uh, most bad moments, bro, fire, bro. It, it's like, bro. Everything Kobe did, bro, he put 110% to it, bro. And, and bro, that's basically the mom mentality, man. Like, bro, put your all in, into anything you're doing, bro. 110%. But it's like, man, shout out to Kobe, man. Shout out to Kobe. Let you know, like, comment, subscribe. Suggest anything else you want to react to. You know it down below in the comments. But check out the next one.